Welcome back. Today we read how Milton travels from eternity all the way down to earth. And traveling through the universe is explained in a way of moving through what Blake calls vortexes, which we might understand as tubes of space that one goes through in a linear fashion. And whenever one reaches the end of the vortex and looks back, then one sees that they're actually globular shapes like a sun or a moon. And Blake explains that in our world, we see everything in a linear way but if we were to move through the vortex that our world is in and look back on it, then we would see it as a globe. Blake, of course, living before space travel, had to imagine all this. But in a sense, he's quite right. Because when we did travel out into space and looked back at the Earth, sure enough, there it was, quite round in, in, the, in the universe. And it makes me think, too, that in a way, it brings together the, the flat Earth believers and the believers in the spherical world as both being correct in a way. And all that they're really doing is looking at things through the two perceptions. The one perception as traveling through the vortex and the other perception as looking back when you've exited. So, Milton on his travels then he meets poor Albion who's in a bad way laid out on the rock of ages. He's in a kind of a sleeping death I guess and Running up against him in a, in a threatening way is the sea of space and time, which I think is probably best understood in the Kantian way, that space and time are the preconditions for human sensibility. In other words, every which way we experience our Earth is through these limitations of space and time. And we never really get to see reality for itself unless we become an eternal. And that, of course, is what Los is busily in his forge crafting. He's crafting arts to raise the human imagination, to bring itself out, 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 of, this, um, out of this limitation. So what happens then? Milton breaks through into the sea of space and time, our world, and then all of a sudden what happens is, is that there are, there's a reversal, that what he saw from the perception of outer space, um, Albion underneath him and him traveling down to take a look at him, now all of a sudden he's down in this sea of time and space, and Albion is up above, of course. You know, in 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 this in this, uh, it's a in his world of eternity, but in a fallen state. And then Milton keeps going, and then, boom! He lands, he lands on um, on Blake's left foot on the tar on the tarsus, and um. Most commentators agree that what that means is by landing on the left foot is that he's entering into the right hemisphere of Blake's, of Blake's brain, you know, which is the more holistic, intuitive um, part of the brain. And at the same time as this happens then, on the other foot, he sees black clouds indicating enormous upheavals on the continent of Europe. So we'll get on with the reading. The nature of infinity is this, that everything has its own vortex. And when once a traveler through eternity has passed that vortex, he perceives it roll backward behind his path into a globe itself enfolding, like a sun or like a moon are like a universe of starry majesty, 
while he keeps onwards in his wondrous journey on the earth, or like a human form, a friend with whom he lived benevolent. As the eye of man views both the east and west encompassing its vortex, and the north and south with all their starry host, also the rising sun and setting moon he views, surrounding his cornfields and his valleys of five hundred acres square. Thus is the earth one infinite plain, and not as apparent to the weak traveller confined beneath a moony shade. Thus is the heaven a vortex past already, and the earth a vortex not yet passed by the traveller through eternity. First Milton saw Albion upon the Rock of Ages, deadly pale outstretched and snowy cold, storm covered, a giant form of perfect beauty outstretched on the rock in solemn death. The sea of time and space thundered aloud against a rock, which was enwrapped with the weeds of death. Hovering over the cold bosom, in its vortex Milton bent down to the bosom of death. What was underneath soon seemed above, a cloudy heaven mingled with stormy seas in loudest ruin. But as a wintry globe descends precipitant through Beulah, bursting with thunders loud and terrible, so Milton's shadow fell precipitant loud thundering into the sea of time and space. Then first I saw him in the zenith as a falling star, descending perpendicular, swift as the swallower swift, and on my left foot falling on the tarsus, entered there, but from my left foot a black cloud redounding spread over Europe. Then Milton knew that the three heavens of Beulah were beheld by him on earth in his bright pilgrimage of sixty years, in the bright females whom his wives, and these three whom his daughters had represented and contained, that they might be resumed by giving up of selfhood. And they distant viewed his journey in their eternal spheres now human, though their bodies remain closed in the dark Ulro till the judgment. Also Milton knew they in himself was human, though now wandering through death's veil, in conflict with those female forms, which in blood and jealousy surrounded him, dividing and uniting without end or number. He saw the cruelties of Ulro, and he wrote them down in iron tablets, and his wives and daughters' names were these. Rahab and Tirza, and Milka and Mala, and Noah and Hogla. They sat ranged around him as the rocks of Horeb round the land of Canaan, and they rose in thunder, smoke and fire his dictate. And his body was the rock Sinai, that body which was on earth born to corruption. And the six females are Hor and Peor and Bashan and Abarim and Lebanon and Hermon. Seven rocky masses, terrible in the deserts of Midian. But Milton's human shadow continued journeying above the rocky masses of the mundane shell, in the lands of Edom and Aram and Moab and Midian and Amalek. The mundane shell is a vast concave earth, an immense hardened shadow of all things upon our vegetated earth, enlarged into dimension and deformed into indefinite space, in twenty-seven heavens and all their hells, with chaos and ancient night and purgatory. It is a cavernous earth of labyrinthine intricacy, twenty-seven folds of opaqueness, and finishes where the lark mounts. Here Milton journeyed in that region called Midian, among the rocks of Horeb, for travellers from eternity pass onward to Satan's seat, but travellers to eternity pass inward to Golganusa. Lost the vehicular terror beheld him, and divine Inatharman called all her daughters, saying, Surely to unloose my bond is this man come. Satan shall be unloosed against Albion. Los heard in terror Inatharman's words, in fibrous strength his limbs shot forth like roots of trees against the forward path of Milton's journey.
your eyes and beheld the immortal man. So you might have caught my error at the um, at the very end of the introduction, where the um, where Milton entering into Blake's body and the black clouds coming from his body both happen at the left foot, not at the left and right foot. So Milton continues on downwards, and as he as as he's as he's getting very very close now, he sees his previous family life that like most families had its problems. He sees his words being written down for him by his family when he was writing his poems because he was blind. He reflects on the story of Tirza and her sisters in the Bible, striving for an equal stasis with men, which Blake looked on as, you know, part of this um, female um, freedom which which um, he didn't approve of. Then it says Milton enters the world of the 27 ages of false religion which of course is the same thing as saying the, the whole history really of human life on earth. He stops at a hub in Horeb that's used for inward and outbound travellers going to or from eternity. Los is described as vehicular because he carries the spirit of Orthona, who is the Zoa of imagination and creativity. Los is terrified he misunderstands Milton's mission, thinking he is bringing his unimaginative religious beliefs with him. Ina Thurman, on the other hand, is delighted, thinking that somehow or other his arrival will break her bond to Los. And at the very end, it introduces the Zoe you rise on, looking on at all these proceedings. So that's it for now. I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.